La Posada, the traditional reenactment of Mary and Joseph going from place to place, coming out of Mexican culture into our own community. And we're going to be learning about that today on Austin Faith Dialogue. Please stay with us. Austin Faith Dialogue, at the crossroads of religion and life. A series highlighting the cultural and social interactions between the worshiping and religious communities in and around the capital city. Austin Faith Dialogue is brought to you by the Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KXAN. Join us now in Austin Faith Dialogue. Hello, I'm Richard Thompson, brought to, bringing to you on behalf of Austin Area Interreligious Ministries, this program today. Formerly known as Austin Metropolitan Ministries, AAIM, is cooperating this year with a couple of churches in town in a La, La Posada procession. We're going to be learning about this traditional event as well as the work of the Community Mentoring Network a part of the Austin Area Interreligious Ministries that works with young people, mentors and mentees in a very creative program that has connected itself to this seasonal event. Today we have with us John Williams, who is the director of the Community Mentoring Network. We also have Veronica uh, uh, Delgado, who is a ment mentor in the CMN work, and then we have Juan Valadez, the youth minister at Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church. We welcome each and every one of you. And we'd like to start with you, Juan, because the La Posada has been an event that uh, you have done in this community for some time. And tell us a little bit about how long and uh, what happens during that. La Posada was started, uh, well, at our parish, uh, we've been doing it for at least 10 years. Uh, the reason I only know it's 10 years is because that's how long I've been at the parish. Mm -hmm. They might have done it in the, in, before that, but I wasn't aware of it. Um, what it is is a reenactment of the journey that Joseph and Mary took <coughs> to Bethlehem and looking for shelter. Okay. So what we do is we reenact that, and we have we choose two people from the community to play the role of Joseph and Mary. Okay. And what we do is we walk around the community and we stop, we make several stops, somewhere like 10 or 12 stops throughout the community and we sing La Posada, basically La Posada is seeking shelter. Mm -hmm. So we reenact the whole journey of Joseph and Mary searching for shelter. And each stop they make they say, is there shelter here? Is there shelter right. here? And there's two parts to each stop. There is the people from the outside who are basically the whole congregation, the community comes out, right. and we all sing to the to the the home or the innkeeper, their role, right. is we're seeking shelter, this is my wife, and she is with child, can we come in? And their part is to tell us, no, we mm -hmm. don't have anything here, this is not an inn, go away. And we do this several stops, and in the previous years, what we've done is we, the, the last stop has always been Guadalupe Church. And we sing there, and of course, everybody comes in, and you know everybody sings, and, and that's the last stop, and that's where Joseph and Mary are received mm -hmm. with open arms. Uh, in the last year, what we did is we incorporated Ebenezer Baptist Church and Metropolitan AME, which are a block and a half from Guadalupe Church, and we incorporated the two churches, and they took part in it. This year, because of the relationship that we've built with Metropolitan AME, through this mentoring project with John, uh, John Williams and uh, AIM, mm -hmm. is we're going to start at Our Lady of Guadalupe like we normally do, but instead of finishing at Our Lady of Guadalupe, we're going to finish at Metropolitan AME. And okay. that's where we'll come in. And that's kind of the story of how we've done it. <clears throat> and we might just pause long enough to identify the day this is going to occur. This is gonna, this, it's going to happen on Monday, December the 11th. Okay. And it starts at 6 p.m. at Our Lady Guadalupe Church in the, new, in the hall that we have uh, <coughs> there on the grounds. Okay, so this, this happens the day after this show airs, and folks who are interested in maybe seeing what it's like or participating, they can come from anywhere in the metropolitan area to They can take come part. from anywhere, and, and they do. I mean, we average, last year we, we had close to 1,000 people. Oh, really? Uh, close to 1,000 people. Show. And, and usually that's what we have. It depends on the weather. One time we didn't have because it was very, very cold. But mm -hmm. usually we have a huge crowd, no less than five, 600 people. 
Okay. And yet all people from all over Austin come. They show up at your place at 6 o'clock? Well, they show up a little bit earlier because at 6 is when we actually start the procession. But I see. you can just, you, if you get there a little late, you can always just follow the singing. Mm -hmm. Your church is located where exactly? Uh, 1206 East 9th Street. <clears throat> okay. And um, now, this year, Community Mentoring Network uh, is participating with uh, these congregations. John, tell us a little bit about what that participation will involve. Well, uh, the oral history project that we are doing on the in the 78702 zip code area where Metropolitan African Methodist Episcopal Church and Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church are, we worked with the youth from both of these congregations and for, with the youth to record life stories or histories of elderly or older people that live in the community and we will premiere our video at La Posada. Okay, now this uh you said a lot in just less than a minute. Congratulations. <laughs> but let's review it. Okay. Uh, you said that uh, uh, you're serving youth in a, did you say a postal area? The well, uh, there are two communities. We have the Guadalupe and then we have the Rosewood. But we're looking at it as one community that has come together to work on something together. Okay. okay. 787. It's a zip code area. It's a zip code. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, this oral history now. Mm -hmm. well, by the way, what is the zip code again? Make sure I got it. Seven eight seven zero two. Oh two. Okay. Yeah. Oh two. Good. Well, I'll I'll know. Uh, make sure next time I send a letter over to to get it right. Mm -hmm. And you've got the uh, the congregations with youth from mm -hmm. both the Our Lady of Guadalupe mm -hmm. and the Metropolitan uh, Methodist African uh, African Methodist Episcopal mm -hmm. Church and you are going to have have had already youth working on a video project right and it's a continuous project right now we have interviewed twenty older members of the community and so we have a lot of video and so the the young people who are in the CMN program community mentoring network mm -hmm. are doing the interviewing of older folks right Is that right you, you shake your head Veronica you've been involved in this yes um, I'm a mentor actually the, the actual recording of, of the videos and the actual, I mean, interview itself is done by a team of three youth. They do the lighting, the camera, and the actual really? oral interview. Wow. And my role in this whole process is just that of the mentor, which is just kind of, I mean, I was part of the technical workshops, but my role is more to kind of guide the youth and kind of be there as, a, as an extra support. So I myself didn't go out and do the interviews. The youth did them, but I was involved in the process to getting them there, okay. and the process after that as well. Okay. So you're not you're not necessarily a, a TV technician sort no. of person. No. The the kids do that. The kids do that. The kids did everything. And you just facilitate this. I just facilitated. The, they did the sound, the lighting, and the camera, and and they worked in teams of three, and they each took turns. One would go out one time and do the sound. The other one would do the lighting. The other one would do the interview, and then they would shift. Okay. Now, in the second half of the show, um, after Juan has shared with us more about the La Posada itself, we're going to be welcoming your mentee, Fabiolo Reyes. Right. And uh, we're, uh, she's in your church, though, right? Yes, she is. And, and Veronica's in your church. Yes. Uh, but you're the youth director. I'm the youth director. Okay. So Veronica's not in your youth group. No. Veronica's not in my youth group. No, <laughs> <laughs> she's part of it though. Really? How so? Well, she, you know, being one of the things I think we do a lot of it in our community right now, and especially with this project, is that we're using all the resources from the community. So whether people are, you know, whether the mentors are part of the parish or not, they live in the community. A lot yeah. of them live in the community. Okay. <clears throat> so they have that connection, and mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that that we have that's really kind of unique about this this program is. We're all working out in the community with all the same youth. So there are people from the parish. There are people that are just living in the community that, are, that have the connection through this, through this program with Our Lady of Guadalupe or Metropolitan. Okay. Now, the people who are being interviewed, the older folks, are they from your parish too? They're the, they're the people that are being interviewed are from both parishes. Both parishes. They're from Metropolitan and from Guadalupe. All right. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, the, that's kind of the, one of the... The, the, our main focus is to try and 
and do this oral history of the two churches and developing that with them. That's a wonderful way to get uh, connected to the media as well, to figure out how to do interviews. And, and uh, I, you're going to say something else about that, John. Well, I, the project will have a product. We have videos. But it was also an effort to teach the youth skills you know, not only technical skills, but life skills, sure. because conversation is an art. Mm -hmm. And if you learn how to ask appropriate questions in an appropriate way, I think that people will hear you and they will share with you and help you meet your needs. Right. Okay, and that's what I was really after, is empowering the youth in such a way that they could take something that will transcend the video project right. that will affect them for years. How many how many kids are involved in the project? We started out with 14 and you know we've had attrition because we do work with youth not only from the congregations but we work with youth that were involved in the juvenile justice system too. You have a connection with the uh, county uh, Travis County and with Gardner municipal Betts. right courts and, and, the municipal and so we work with those youth and it because I saw it as becoming more like a peer counseling too because they, the youth were helping each other, uh -huh. okay, because the adults were there, but a lot of the youth were helping each other and uh -huh. I liked that a lot. Oh, that's great. So, but now we still have about a dozen youth involved and mm -hmm. I like it because it's like an open-ended situation so they come, they get what they can use, yeah. then they yeah. leave and then so it's, um, it works. You're not only going to show this video at the uh, La Posada on December the 11th. I understand you're going to be having a display of this at the Austin Children's Museum in February. Starting about mid-February through the end of March, we'll be at the Austin Children's Museum for about six weeks. I see. Uh, we've got just a minute before the break. Veronica, we're going to uh, bring in your mentee in the second half here, but I think uh, just following up on what John has said, how many of these young people have you been working with? Well, um, through through being involved in the oral history video project, I was able to meet many young people. And it's not because it's based out of a group and we do everything as a group. I see. It's not just myself and my mentee in isolation. I work with her her cousin and, and everybody, all the other kids in that group. And as a result of that group, we yes. started other <laughs> projects and we brought in the siblings. So I not only mm -hmm. work with Fabiola, but I work with her sister, her little brother her cousin's little oh, brother, her wonderful. cousin's sister. Yeah. So it's the whole family. And it's really just creating this network, you know, of, of youth and adults, and, right, and, and right. it's in a positive. Well, way. you're, you're uh, setting us up to look forward to her coming and uh, telling <laughs> us about that herself. And uh, Juan, in our last uh, few seconds here, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. For your work over at uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, it's obviously you, you like it and, and are making a big difference. So the kids we'll have, have you back on another program sometime. Thank for you. Sure. And we're going to be coming back in just a few minutes uh, with the second half of the show on La Posada and uh, the Community Mentoring Network and stay with us. you came on board here and uh, you how long has it been that you've been a mentee with uh, Veronica like nine months and uh, say like last March or so mm -hmm. and during that time were you involved in this video project she was talking about yeah that's kind of like where I met her when we started the video project oh you met her through that project yeah 
Now, in doing that, what what kind of uh, work did you do? I mean, we were on camera or do the interviews with these older folks, or what did you do? We took turns. Some like some of us would uh, ask the questions, and one of us would do sound, and the other one would do camera. You and kind of rotate around doing that. Yes. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing that video because I think uh, you have folks that have lived in that community for a long time, and this is a way of helping them remember what's happened so that people who haven't been there are this there's no written history maybe of some of that is that the idea of it john well the oral history portion yes because there are a lot of real interesting stories about how did our lady of guadalupe church end up in the area how did metropolitan african methodist episcopal church end up in the area and they have some very interesting stories about how all of that took place because you have members in the church that are still alive to remember how they were located in the area oh really i mean those churches haven't been there forever no. you know when your church started there it was like i believe like 1926 or something it was 20. moved because of city replanning that they moved it out of it was actually located on Guadalupe Street and when the city of Austin was expanding they decided that ah. you know they needed to move this traditionally Catholic Mexican American church somewhere else because it interfered with the development of of the city oh I see so it was, it was closer to down by the river wasn't it was it? Downtown. On, on Guadalupe Street and yes. Our Lady of Guadalupe then ties in with that. Right. Mm -hmm. You're going to add to that. Well, I was going to talk about one of their older members of their congregation uh, parish that talks about the move and how it was a smaller because it's much larger than it was then. But how they moved the church brick by brick from where it is now to its current location, that and right? that they expanded from around the original structure, and they have a I. Con a, a dead Jesus that they talk about. Brother Mario talks about that a lot. Crucifix, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, and I, when I hear the story and I've seen the video, I can imagine the amount of feelings that the whole procession, because we're talking about La Posada now and the procession that will happen. Yes. But right. this was a different one. It was a, more like an exodus from one area to another. Uh, uh. Well, you know, one of the things, too, that uh, I think is uh, really touching about the, the connection that you're making between your congregation and that of the, uh, of the Metropolitan African American, African uh, Methodist Episcopal Church, mm -hmm. uh, AME, mm -hmm. is that that part of the city, the eastern part of the city, has, for some folks, has been you know that the uh, African Americans are on one side of what 11th or 12th Street and the Hispanic community is on the other side and this it looks to me like you're trying to to bring together uh, populations that have been sometimes not in as close a communication is, is it, did you see that as part of the yes, reason? Yes and also to to um, erase a lot of the the, the mis the perceptions of the east side as a whole uh -huh. i mean yes the community was divided but it wasn't divided as as bad as you know people make it out to be and mm -hmm. the east side is really not that violent just different stereotypes that have been created and perpetuated you know for, about the east side and mm -hmm. and through working together and through doing these um these projects and actually coming on air and talking about them that really erases a lot of the stereotypes that have I been see. built about the east side and that community so really we're not only empowering ourselves with our own oral history but we're also breaking down those stereotypes and and creating a new perception a, a more realistic perception of what our community is about mm -hmm. and maybe not only a perception of it but of the experience of a unity right uh fabiola you were um you were also uh involved in uh, as a mentee I mean that's I think of mentor mentee as like school relationship has Veronica been helpful to you in relation to your schoolwork yeah she helps me with my homework she I, did, how, how does she do that well we have our tutoring on Mondays and Wednesdays and I go and she helps me with my homework mm -hmm. and uh, this is like after school or in the evening how, how, when does that happen it's in the evening like from six to eight 
I see. Monday and Wednesday. Right. That's quite a bit. And this is actually um, one of the opportunities that I get to work with Fabiola's older sister and her younger brother as well, which are currently not part of the video project, but because I work with Fabiola and I met her through this process, you know, I've been able to work with her family as well. And her cousin, Cindy Mondragon, which is also a participant of the project, mm -hmm. her brother and her little sister come to the tutoring as well. So oh my gosh, it's you've really got <laughs> several members of the family there. Then. Through, through this project, we really just engaged youth and, and we came down to a real core group of youth and, and mentors mm -hmm. and through those partnerships we're developing new programs that help our youth I continue see. so it goes beyond just the video project mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they initiated a study session or the tutoring that is currently going on right now because they felt that that you know they really wanted to focus on school and they really wanted to pass this first semester of school and they came to us for help they said well can you help us do Who's this the 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 participant well, Fabiola and Cindy and their brothers and their sisters and all the other kids that we met through the video project ah, but along with their families. And so one thing kind of led to another. Some of their friends. It kind of snowballed into this big thing. Yeah. But it, it was a good thing because it's, it's really, I think we began to build a real sense of community and like safety net because right. the, the relationship is so strong. That's great. Because it's done on a group level like Cindy's mentor doesn't have to be there for her to feel comfortable to be around me, sure. even though I'm not her mentor, mm -hmm. but I really am because now, it's a group effort. Uh, Fabiola, has, has working with Veronica helped your grades? Can you tell a difference in you know, how you're doing in school? Yes. I mean, in what way can you tell the difference? Uh, they're higher. They're higher. <laughs> if they went lower, it would be a little discouraging, wouldn't it? <laughs> But, uh, and, and the, the fact is that um, you, you met through the video project. You're doing the mentor-mentee thing. Is there anything else that you all do together, the two of you? We go out to E and we go, like, to the Union. To Inside. the Union? Yeah. Underground. University of Texas. Oh, at the University of Texas. No kidding. You go over there for recreation and yeah, just, just have they have fun. a bowling alley over there, don't they? Yeah. Have you done that? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, we actually showed them around campus, too, because I myself am a student, so we just walk around campus. We've gone to a couple of student organizational meetings, and um, through, through the connections with other students that I have at UT, they've been able to meet mm -hmm. some other UT students that have been brought into our tutoring program as well. So we're making connections with the university, with university students. You're a student at the university yourself? Yes. An undergraduate? Yes. And you're doing this as a volunteer? Basically, I mean, it's part of, I work, I'm an outreach worker for East Austin Youth Charter, but the, the mentoring, community mentoring project was kind of on the side. It was kind of in collaboration with, but I've become more, definitely more engaged than initially what I had I intended. see. You said it so fast I didn't uh, get what the, a charter, what is that? East Austin Youth Charter. What is that? And that's uh, another organization that, um, works with the 78702 zip code area, but it's a research-based initiative. It was a project that was initiated for um, research purposes, All right. and they were studying at-risk youth. Okay. Before we get too far away from La Posada, I'd like to make sure we got on the screen that uh, information about the event, which is, we said, December the 11th at uh, 6 o'clock. We don't have it. Okay. Well, we'll just... Uh, keep saying it <laughs> before the show is over so folks will know that uh, it's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add something real quick. Okay. I, I, I'm really so amazed. I've been working with Fabiola and the other participants for nine months, but you have really seen a transformation in these youth. I mean, uh. they went from being very camera shy to I mean, she's going to be on TV, and that's that's a yeah. that's a giant yeah. leap for that's you know wonderful. a youth that has not been exposed to that, as well as myself. I mean, I had never been that exposed to cameras and right. interviewing people. And, and just it does a lot for people's people. self-esteem, I think, to be uh, involved right. in this. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're getting, well, we've got uh, several minutes here. I, I, did you want to add to that? Because I've got another question. Well, I, I would like to talk about relationship building, which I think that the Community Mentoring Network does a lot because we emphasize the importance of each other, okay, because the mentor 
isn't there to like pour knowledge into an empty vessel to youth. Mm -hmm. Okay, they share their realities and how they experience their lives and they learn not only about each other but they learn about life in general okay. and I think that's a good thing and then it spreads out and you heard Veronica talking about the ripple effect about how more more people are being brought into community mm -hmm. yeah. okay we're bringing in more projects and whatnot so we'll be able to involve other people okay well I think that we've several times touched on that there, there's a network and interconnection one thing leads to another kind of process. It's very creative and, and healing, I think. Now, one thing, though, in the last minute or so we've got, I know that the Community Mentoring Network is part of the Austin Area Interreligious Ministries. Mm -hmm. John, in the paper, I think it was the Monday, November the 27th paper, there was an article about uh, AAIM mm -hmm. that uh, you want to say something about that. Well, interreligious ministries does do good work in the community, but it does cost money. We do need what I, and this infrastructure, okay, but we do a lot of good programming, but unless we have basic stuff like housing for us, we're looking for housing, okay, because we go out and we have to pay housing, rent, utilities, whatnot. We do need support. Okay, and then it's through AAIM that you've got the uh, hands-on housing, mm -hmm. you've got a refugee settlement program, as well as what you're doing. And we have programs, too, but these are some of the major programs to address homelessness, you mm -hmm. know, to address the youth issues, you know, right. in our community. Well, that article in the paper, it was indicating that there was a grant from the, uh, of the Seton uh, mm -hmm. foundation that was going to be ending at the end of the year and that, that after the first year was a good time to make that uh, contribution. And by the way, it's an essential time for us to say goodbye. I want to first of all say, John Williams, thanks for being back again. Veronica and Fabiano, thank you for being here. And may you all have a blessed Christmas. And may you two folks, as you look in today and next week on Austin Faith Dialogue, be blessed in this uh, holiday season. I'm Richard Thompson, and peace be with you. Thank you.